This is Martin Robinson, a Michigander whose artistic endeavors are known throughout the world. He's a puppeteer who's best known for the Sesame Street characters of Snuffleupagus, Deli Monster, and Slimy the Worm, among others. Born in Michigan, raised and educated in Wisconsin and Michigan, he still calls Michigan home, and rightfully so. Regularly, he steals away from the hustle and bustle of the job he loves to retreat to his family's properties deep in the northern Michigan wilderness, land that he more or less grew up on with his aunts, uncles, and cousins. It's family property that he says over the years has become a part of him. We have the opportunity to sit and visit with Martin thanks to a longtime friendship he's had with a mutual friend, Nelson Yoder. Nelson, as you know, is curator of the Michigan Magazine Museum and layout artists of our quarterly magazine. Martin's family and Nelson's family have been friends for many years. It was a late summer's morning when we meandered on to the Robinson family retreat, not far from the Michigan Magazine Museum. We were greeted by the sounds of loons and ducks as we sat and began our chat. It's an interesting aspect of this of this place. We this my grandfather bought this in 1957 for a, a pittance at the time, and it's it's um, over 300 acres. Um, and you know, and, and the family came here to the to the place, and the uh, and the you know, and the family worked on the place, and there's been renovations and cabins, a few cabins added, although it's still very simple. And because of the place is so beautiful, you know, family kept coming back, and we think of the family as having created this place. But in reality, when you think about it, it's, it's actually the opposite. The place, because of its beauty and because of the need to come here, uh, has gi gi given a place for the family to, to create itself. Mm -hmm. uh, because, we were all, because we all came here, we all uh, you know, fell in love with each other. And uh, I was raised with my cousins, like my first cousins, like brothers and sisters. Mm -hmm. So... In a way, the place created the family. So now we've got all this, all the, this inertia of family uh, and love and caring that brings everybody, everybody back every year, sometimes as many as 40, 45 people at a time, all here because, the, uh, because we were raised together and we want to be together. And the place has, has created our family in that way. It's part of a conservancy program, so it, it will be held in mm -hmm. trust in this state mm -hmm. forever. The fun thing about my work and puppetry in general is that it's so much fun and it's so creative and 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 even though yes it's my job and I get up at 5:30 in the morning and I catch the commuter train and I get to work and I you know and I have all my scripts that I have to mark and memorize and it's still so much fun and so enjoyable. It's not work in the sense of something that I do to you know think of retiring from or think of going home to work to relax. It's uh, it's 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 my joy mm -hmm. as well as my work, uh, and you know, and it's tiring, yeah, of course, but I love it. So it's, it's yeah, so it never, so it's not something I, I look to get away from at all. And as long as I can do this, as long as I can strap that, you know, hundred pounds of snuffleupagus on my back, or work the plants from Little Shop of Horrors, or work those little wires of slime with the worm, I'm gonna I'm gonna still do it. Uh, Carol Spinney, who does Big Bird and Oscar, is in you know, I, I, you know, he wouldn't mind me saying he's in his late 60s, uh, and has been doing it since the beginning, and will continue to do it. Hey, tell us about your background. Now, how did you get into the puppeteering world and the love? How did the, that develop? the puppeteering world is is strange. Uh, it's not like other professions where you plan to become a puppeteer and then go to puppeteering school, and then graduate, and then work through any kind of job situation. Uh, uh, puppeteering is, uh, is a lot of strange people, a lot of misfits, uh, people who uh, come from other, other, uh, uh, other, other jobs, other, uh, other uh, it's educations. A, it's a love of yours, isn't it? Oh, yeah. This is something that you... It's one of those things that, that when, when you become, uh, when you have uh, contact with it, it, uh, it you get bit. Mm -hmm. And uh, and eventually you uh, you realize that this is the best job in the world, except maybe for yours. Oh yeah, 
I left left Michigan uh, in uh, 72. Mm -hmm. uh, went to acting school in New York and, uh, and had, a, had a background in, in art from, uh, from schools uh, in, in Wisconsin. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And uh, I, uh, I went for an audition uh, for a marionette company, a touring marionette company. I was qualified because I had a driver's license, and they were willing, and I was young and <laughs> enthusiastic, and they were willing to train me. So I, uh, I went out on that job, and it wasn't until, uh, and actually I worked with marionettes off and on just as a, as a sideline for a couple of years, and worked for an old American puppeteer named uh, uh, Bill Baird, which uh, we may remember from uh, the great scene in uh, Sound of Music, The Lonely Goat Herd. He's, he's known for that, uh, and by the time there was an, an audition for the Muppets, I uh, had I knew enough about hand puppetry to be able to uh, get through the audition, and uh, and it worked out. I was hired kind of as an uh, as an apprentice, but I was very lucky because they uh, they needed somebody to play the part of this Snuffleupagus character, mm -hmm. and there were certain physical requirements. You had to be over six feet tall. You had to be strong. Had a nice, have a, a deep voice and and have the puppetry skills. There's a fellow who did snuffy for about yes. three years before that. Absolutely. Uh, How did you finally the, happen into the audition there? The great Jerry Nelson originated the character. He's one of the the original core members of the of the Muppets. Mm -hmm. It was uh, Jim Henson, Frank Oz, Jerry Nelson, Dave Goles, and Richard Hunt and Kathy Mullen. And you know as they moved on to other projects, there was uh, there was there were people that were hired on. I'm, I guess, kind of considered the, the, the second ring mm -hmm. of people, although I still consider myself the new guy. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I've been there 23 years. Ah, okay. Um, and so what happens is, is as, as some of the other performers would move on to other things, sometimes uh, their, their characters are replaced. It happens very rarely. We, we're very consistent with our characters uh, as puppeteers we really believe very strongly in the the uh, in the the concept of the character and the uh, the truth of the character mm -hmm. so and we're we're the last line again you know sometimes seemingly against all the producers and the writers and the puppet builders the puppeteers are the the personality for the uh, for the character so I took over Snuffy 23 years ago mm -hmm. and then worked into some of the other characters along the way by learning what I needed to learn and, and not blowing it. So I, I went into uh, Telemonster, uh -huh. Slimy the Worm, um, various yeah. grouches and horses and the, things. The script line of some of these uh, situations is really kind of unique. How much is scripted? How much do you have a free reign to do a little ad-libbing? It's very well scripted. The, the writers are... Uh, are wonderful. They, they, there's a lot of research that goes into it. It's not right. accidental okay. how, how, uh, how good these shows are. Uh, the, the, the research is, is done on, on how kids learn, what kids are learning these days, what's, what are the fast tracks as far as uh, certain educational styles and elements. Mm -hmm. And and how fast kids are learning, and then we have certain curricular elements that are particular to each season, mm -hmm. uh, and those are all combined with with a great group of writers who are you know who are also you know screenplay writers and playwrights and uh, and comedy writers, and we get excellent scripts to you begin with, to kind of and then and then we and then we play with them yeah. some. You, you have to be sure that it's very true to the character. Martin went on to say that staying true to the character of Snuffleupagus was a wonderful challenge for him. Our talk that day covered subjects from puppeteering to family and friends, with occasional glimpses of Martin's hectic life thrown in, a life that's been filled with world travel and unusual opportunities, such as his training puppeteers to continue the Sesame Street franchise in countries around the world. As a matter of fact, following Martin's stay at the family retreat, He'd be headed to Moscow to train a Russian puppeteering troupe. We'll talk more with Martin Robinson, a.k.a. Snuffleupagus, Slimy the Worm, and Telly Monster on a future program, where he'll tell us of his other experiences and aspirations in not only puppeteering, but also producing and directing, and also provide some sage advice for those aspiring puppeteers. Join us then as we continue our visit here on Michigan Magazine. <laughs>